Hello everyone, I'm Marina and that's a Grammel School. Everybody seems to be talking about thin yet long-lasting nails. But not every nail technician can do thin nail strengthening. Today I will spill some secrets of beautiful gel nail strengthening. So stay tuned and let's get right into it! Do you remember this model? In one of my latest videos I got to transform her left hand and her right hand was manicured by one of our students. Now that her nails have grown, I can do a nail fill. Remember this traumatized pinky nail? I secured it with some hard acrylic material. But nevertheless, the crack has got even bigger. Though it doesn't hurt anymore. So let's take this coating off and take a closer look. If the nail is alright, then I can do an extension today. So let's remove the coating. To get thin and elegant nails, we need to remove quite a lot of it. Keeping a thick layer left, we risk getting thick tips. Sure, we can file them out on the inside, but it's our primary task to sculpt the nails properly. Always make sure to remove all the peeling if there is any. I trim the pinky nail with clippers and carefully remove the coating. I got really nervous at this point. The last thing I wanted to do was to hurt my model. But she assured me that it didn't hurt. So it means that the cracked part has grown a lot. It has healed and since the nail bed is not damaged, we can extend this nail today. Now I push the cuticle and remove the pterygium using a flame diamond drill bit. In the meantime, I'm going to tell you how to sculpt thin nails that will last. The length of a nail bed is the first thing to take into account. This one is rather long, so we'd better use harder materials to strengthen it properly, either polygel or gel. As for a base coat, I don't think it will last. The harder, the better in this case. This nail shape lasted perfectly. The corners of the nail still look defined, so we're going to stick to this shape. Now let's strengthen the nails with gel. If the hands are sweating, I recommend using adhesive products. It can be a pH bond or a dehydrator to dry the nail bleed. I will skip this step since this skin is normal. I'm going to use an acid-free primer instead, also known as a double-sided tape. I've got a few options. I choose one of them depending on the mood. We need this product to get some tacky residue left on the nail blade. Doing a nail fill, I put this on the natural nail only. There is no need to put it on the free edge. There is some leftover coat in there that will bond with the gel that I'm going to use next perfectly. So I don't even bother to waste my time on it. Here comes a base coat. For gel nail strengthening, we can use a gel polish base or a solid gel base. Just make sure that it goes well with your gel. It's actually pretty common for a gel coating to peel off as the time goes by. Just because it doesn't go well with the base coat, so there is no way to use such products together. Try to get as close to the cuticle line as possible at this point. Otherwise, if there is no base coat between the nail and the gel, there is a chance of peeling in the cuticle zone. Avoiding this is the main criterion of a long-lasting coating. By the way, doing a nail fill, we can put a base coat on the natural nail only. Don't cover up the free edge unless you want to. And as for the material, medium viscosity gels will be the best for nail strengthening, since there is no need to align them. I grab some gel and cover up the nail to get a tacky surface. Then I grab a drop of gel that will do for strengthening. And here is how to align it in the cuticle zone. It's a crucial step. Form a 45 degree angle with a brush leaving about a millimeter gap near the cuticle line. This way we can form a smooth transition to the natural nail. So, there is no need to waste time on touching it up in the cuticle zone. 
tilt the finger down to let the gel flow to the free edge. That will help to lift curved tips. Be careful at this point, so as not to mess it up. To file the nail last later. There is no need to turn the hand over, since I'm going to file the nail surface anyways. But it's crucial not to use too much gel. The more we apply, the more we file off. And I don't want to waste my time, so I'm being particularly careful. I line the gel on the sides and check the nail architecture from the side view. By the architecture, I mean the apex and the strengthened stress zone. Don't worry if the free edge is too thick at this point. We can file the axis out to lift the curved tips. I'm going to use a paper form to extend the pinky nail. I remove the tab first and try the form on. Now I need to trim it in the center to get rid of the gap between the nail and the form. Always make sure that this line on the form follows the central axis of the finger. I make cuts to secure the form on the nail and get a perfect C curve. It should be thin and elegant, unlike a flat nail. I stick the form and put it on. The gel is hard enough to secure thin nail corners. They will remain defined for a longer time than polygel ones. That's why I often choose gel over polygel for sculpting square nails. Do you like manicure and nail extensions? If you do, join my new online course on nail sculpting from zero to pro and get your certificate. The course is available worldwide. For more information, click the link in the description box below. I sculpt a square nail shape on the template first, cure it in a lamp, and when I take the form off, there is already a perfect C curve. That's why it's so important to put the forms on the right way. The C curve will make the nail stronger. Nails with defined curves last way longer than flat ones. Many nail technicians try to align the nails to strengthen them. But from the side view, a longitudinal curve looks too dramatic. As we turn the hand over in the process, the gel flows to the center. So I recommend you file the nails for more definition, to get thin and elegant tips. The free edge will be perfectly defined. For this, we need to file it at a 90 degree angle first. Then we file the sidewalls to make sure that they are parallel to each other. And here's one more secret of perfect nails. Defining a longitudinal curve. I try to file an even line from the apex to the free edge to make the nails even more defined. Now I smooth them out with a buffer. It's time to file all the excess gel out. So I turn the finger over and do it using a carbide drill bit. The tip of the nail should be about 1 mm thick. Now let's cover our beautiful C curve with a top coat. I also put some non-tacky top coat on the inside to avoid peeling. Here's a final look. These beautiful nails are dictated by current trends. And that's amazing. I hope that more nail technicians join me in this elegant trend. So make sure to give this technique a shot. Success in your work! Good luck! Bye-bye!